uh, student that will enroll in that particular program lah ya. Okay. Okay. Alright. So, let me just. Okay. Sekarang saya nak masuk kepada self-instructional material yang ditaja dari awal. Semua dah tak sabar. What is self-instructional material? Okay. Self-instructional material is a mechanism or system where all forms of interaction and delivery are integrated. Alright. So, yang penting dalam self-instructional material when you prepare a self, nama pun self-instructional Nama pun self-instructional material, we are looking at preparing instructional material for self-directed self -directed learners. Okay, meaning that maksudnya sini, these particular materials, the SIM, what we call SIM, can be used by the ODL student without you, the lecturers, being there with them. Okay, maksudnya ianya boleh digunakan uh, pukul 12 malam baru dia nak belajar. Alright, sebab siang dia kerja, for example, dia working. Uh, biasanya ODL kita buka kepada part-time. Part-timers who are working during the day and they would like to uh, further uh, their academic qualification um, after working hours. So, we are offering the part-time. Okay, kalau full-time, dia kena boleh habiskan in full time. So sometimes you know you can offer both full time or part time. So katalah student itu part time ataupun memang pelajar tu memang buruh hantu for example dia memang nak belajar tengah malam. So they will be able to use the SIM. Okay. Uh, for example pukul satu malam dia nak belajar. Okay. Dan dia ambil masa satu jam dia akan go, go through the SIM dalam SIM tersebut. There will be resources, there will be activities, there will be also assessment. Alright. Okay. So, kalau boleh. Okay, kalau boleh. Okay, biasanya kalau uh, saya audit, I'm auditing the um, university swasta, yeah? the private colleges, private universities, they actually have this instructional designer to help the lecturers to design and develop the scene. Okay, biasanya private universities ada. Tetapi uh, universiti awam biasanya kita ni uh, uh, tiada instructional designer at. And you know, uh, we have been discussing this. We don't have uh, a jawatan. Perjawatan instructional designer pun tidak wujud dalam universiti awam. So, uh, but the private university, they have this instructional designer who help the lecturers to design the SIM. However, okay, however, we lecturers, we actually, okay, saya selalu, sebab saya, I am an instructional designer. So, I always tell my students, we are also instructional designer. We, who are the one who design the instruction for our students. All right. So, then, if you don't have a unit or section devoted for designing and developing the SIM, then you can actually design the SIM by yourself. Okay. It must include resources. It must include activities. And it must include the assessment in one SIM. All right. Alright, so you have the electronic platform, so I am not worried about this. Okay, yang ni tadi ada soalan tentang boleh tak guna SIM untuk uh, guna orang lain punya ke? Boleh tak ambil yang uh, apa tadi, uh, the, the publisher okay. uh, punya ke and so on? Yes, you can. Alright, you boleh guna uh, adopting Okay, you can adopt existing materials, you can adapt existing materials, you can create original materials and you can apply other appropriate approaches. Maksudnya SIM, this, SIM is very flexible. Okay, SIM is very flexible. Jadi maksudnya kalau you dah ada dalam you punya uh, e-learn, for example, you ada existing materials, 
why not use just guna sahaja you can adopt mungkin uh, boleh diubah ditambah baik dan sebagainya alright and then you can create original materials okay and then you can use other appropriate approaches however the department should consider having intellectual property rights and licensing policies for learning materials, learning object and innovation. Kenapa? Alright. Sometimes, you know, we, kita lah, lecturers lah, especially, when we design our uh, materials, learning materials, we pergi Google saja. We just Google, okay, pergi dekat image, katalah ni image computer. So you go to computer and then there are a lot of interesting images and you just right click and then you put in your computer and then in your learning material you just upload because it is appropriate to your, for example, PowerPoint. Alright, jadi yang itu adalah satu kesalahan yang biasanya all the pensyarah tidak aware. Mereka, our lecturers, sometimes they are not aware of the copyright issues okay in learning materials so jadi you the department should consider having intellectual property meaning that bila when the lecturers or the instructional designer prepare the scene okay make sure that the materials being used adalah material yang non-copyright for example from open source and so on so that Okay, so that after you have created your seam, you can copyright the seam for your institution. Alright, kalau macam kami di university, uh, research university, you know, every uh, lecturers berebut-rebut nak buat copyright of their instructional material so that they dapat KPI uh, copyright. Okay, so you might want to consider the uh the copyright lah ataupun institutional uh, uh, adakan copyright ataupun all right you can put the seam as uh apa namanya tu creative common license meaning that it is not copyrighted but there are certain measures in um creative common license it can be an oer and so on so you must consider this meaning that dalam document NTA 01 nanti kena sebut okay our scene is copyrighted under apa ataupun will be copyrighted under my IPO for example ataupun our scene is considered as open source and it uses um, creative common license uh, CCBY for example okay CCBY uh, whatever lah yang mana it can be uh, copied, okay, but copied the same. Ha, so, yang itu mesti dinyatakan dalam dokumen about copyright so that people will be clear of your, of your, uh, the, siapa punya the same, yeah? Alright. Alright, let me uh, tengok the soalan first. Pergi ke atas dulu. Alright, Dr. Nolly. Okay. Can the instructional materials be done in Teams for instance or must be in PDF format? Okay, saat lagi saya jawab ya Dr. Nolly. Alright, sebab ada dalam slide yang saya akan tunjukkan saat lagi ni. Alright. Then, uh, Dr. Dr. Syarikat. Apa beza dengan semua of learning materials kaya safra memang wajib ke ada ODL expert dalam institusi yang nak mohon ODL yes kalau uh, ok uh, apa yang berlaku yang doktor siapa ni ada Rizal nanti saya saat lagi saya jawab ya sebab saya nak dalam uh, this particular uh, this particular slide juga cuma saya jawab yang mana yang tidak termasuk Alright, so can the instructional materials be done in uh, teams or must be in PDF format pun saya akan jawab saat lagi. Dr. Hayati tadi, uh, 
Memang wajib ke ada ODL expert dalam institusi yang nak mohon ODL? Ya, wajib. Boleh katakan wajiblah sebab kalau, okay. Bila institusi tersebut, the UA or you private university, uh, they are feeling the MQA01. Alright. So, apa yang terjadi adalah kalau uh, akreditasi sementara program biasa, ya, yeah, which is not ODL, uh, biasanya uh, dokumen itu akan dihantar terus kepada auditor. Okay, ada uh, seorang atau dua orang auditor, dia akan tengok dan dia akan buat report and that's it. Alright, that's it. Untuk conventional courses, conventional programs. However, for ODL, apa yang akan terjadi bila you hantar MQA01, uh, the, 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 the uh, document, okay, uh, the, the MQA, MQA will actually appoint uh, panel for expert in that particular area. Okay, maksudnya kalau you science, for example, jadilah seorang uh, MQA panel yang akan melihat the program itself. Dan MQA juga akan appoint orang macam saya, alright, ODL auditors untuk untuk melihat that particular program. Okay, dan untuk ODL kita akan ada session. We will have a session. Okay, macam last week what I did was we arrange uh, an uh, apa kata, uh, meeting. Okay, uh, Google Meet meeting for example and during that particular meeting, okay, the session, we are going to look at only the ODL preparation. Okay, maksudnya you are the platform and the ODL expert should be there and well versed of the platform, well versed of the ODL program and he or she will be showing us, okay how the programs will be delivered via online meaning that via odl you know online via odl meaning that um the, the head of program dia mungkin expert dalam the program itself tapi the odl sh person should be there to support the delivery of odl so wajib sebenarnya memang lebih kurang wajib lah ya uh, so mungkin kalau satu universiti kalau ada seorang Okay, tak sepenuhlah dalam setiap program ada seorang tetapi one university yeah, should have one experts in ODL kalau universiti tersebut, institusi tersebut ingin uh, menjalankan program ODL. Okay. Alright. Uh, Okay, apa beza SIM tadi dah nanti saya jawab. Okay, e-book can be considered a SIM. Saya jawab nanti. Uh, bantuan mengajar slide PowerPoint. Betul atau salah? It is, uh, uh, kalau slide, okay, uh, slide PowerPoint and so on, it is not, it, lebih kurang lah kita nak kata alat bantu mengajar tetapi it is much more comprehensive. Kalau you letak your PowerPoint itself, it is not considered a SIM. Alright? Okay, and then, okay, this is a big issue for me, Dr. Jacqueline. If I use my own research photographs and sound recordings, I do, do not want this to be creative comments. How do avoid, I do avoid problems? Then you can copyright your materials lah kalau you guna you punya, your own photograph, for example, from your research. You uh, have your own sound recordings, you can, can copyright the C. Okay, so you don't want to use creative comments, you can go to my info and then you uh, bayar my info, I think 60 ringgit je kot. So, uh, biasanya research uh, the RMC ya, yeah, for universities, uh, they will provide the uh, apa cara, kaedah bagaimana selalu ni kalau di USM memang kami go to the our RMC untuk uh, apply for the copyright. So, Dr. Jacqueline, yes that tak payah guna copyright kalau you tak nak uh, you tak payah guna creative common if you don't want it to be open alright ada kelas my UMS atau juga kelas so makukan SIM alright uh, Dr. Mok uh, SIM bukan platform okay SIM is not a platform SIM diletakkan dalam kita punya smart UMS juga kelas so or e-learning platform Okay. Um, ODL expert have certain certificate, is it? Uh, 
Kalau macam saya, saya memang saya punya PhD in instructional design so and I'm doing the research on ODL jadi tak adalah certificate yang menjatakan you are ODL expert but we have uh, itulah saya pun tak pasti sekarang ni uh, berapa ramai ODL expert di Malaysia however kalau dalam dalam um, UMS for example I can see the e-learning center with the Puan Salmi pun boleh dianggap sebagai ODL expert I think Alright, ah, sebab dia ada pengalaman, dia ada um, uh, certain measures yang dia tahu tentang ODL, that should be okay lah. Alright. Okay, tentang isu copyright tu tak jelas. Bolehkah kita copy pictures and video dari Google Pictures or YouTube? Alright, so isu, isu copyright. Satu perkara, okay, copy pictures dari Google. Okay, when you are, yang ni kena ada sesi pula, how to uh, uh, know that the, 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 our, the items, the gambar atau the video that we uh, ambil daripada uh, Google itu copyrighted or not. Okay, selalunya kalau, kalau you nak cari open source, then bila you pergi Google, you kena cari dekat tools, alright, dekat tools tu, um, copyright, bahagian uh, apa, apa nama ni saya pun tak ingat tapi uh, sebelah tarikh tu okey you cari adalah uh, image yang tiada copyright ataupun open source alright you tak boleh ambil google nampak image and you tak uh, yang you simpan dalam uh, komputer tak boleh ya you kena make sure that you know the copyright okey sebab also uh, google pictures tu memang tak boleh youtube alright youtube kalau you embed okey kalau you download tak boleh alright Okay, so meaning that YouTube biasanya ia je memang disediakan untuk orang share dan embed. Jadi, you must give credit lah. Kalau you gunakan the YouTube dalam you punya scene, you must give credit. Okay, tapi you tak boleh pula copyright the scene. Okay, sebab ia adanya ada uh, bahan daripada orang lain. Okay. Alright, so I'll continue with the uh, scene tadi. Okay, sebab ada soalan tentang Uh, uh, self instruction material tadi dalam chat tentang uh, kalau saya guna PDF saja boleh tak? Okay. Alright. Boleh. Okay. Text. How do you design your self instructional uh, materials? Okay. Jadi text material strategy. Maksudnya PDF only. Okay. Boleh. Alright. Sebenarnya if let's say uh, if As far as I know, okay, yeah, ODL institutions such as Wawasan, for example, yeah, Wawasan Open University, they have been in this ODL for ages, and then they appoint uh, module writers to do to design and develop their self instructional materials. See, it is a module in terms of module, and tetapi they have requirement. If you are going to do it in PDF, ianya bukan semata mata letak nota. Alright. It is not notes. Alright. So meaning that you have resources. For example, okay. Sekejap saya pergi ke depan sikit dulu. Alright. So saya pergi ke depan dulu supaya anda tahu bahawasanya in a SIP whether it is a PDF okay ataupun it is an interactive SIM. Alright. SIM can be PDF. It can be an interactive sim, you can ada title, okay, you can ada introduction, you can ada list of content, alright kalau ada banyak content lah if let's say you do one uh, topic saja sim tersebut and you want to put in one box of your smart UFS for example okay, just uh, satu content saja should be okay, okay, you must have learning outcomes, okay uh, the sim cater what learning outcomes, alright And then resources needed for the unit and topic, you akan letak resources. You must have activities for independent learning. Alright, maksudnya dia, dia belajar pukul uh, satu pagi pun, they will, after they look at the resources, they will be able to do activities based on the resources. Okay, then dah buat activity, they will be, you might have questions or you might have quiz. Okay, quiz that they will do by themselves. 
Okay, dan akhirnya mungkin you ada satu ni. Okay, key, from, key points from this modules adalah apa-apa-apa dan apa. Alright, just key points saja. So, it, ma, it must have this thing. Alright, sebab so, balik kepada soalan boleh tak buat dalam uh, PDF? Yes, you can as long as you have all this. Meaning that tak adalah your students, your ODS student bergantung sepenuhnya kepada internet. Meaning that, okay, uh, you have put this in your uh, smart UMS or your blackboard or whatever and then they can download and then they boleh tutup computer and then they can study this particular scene on this particular topic. Okay, and they boleh dah duduk kat situ, tulis, 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 tulis. At the end of the PDF scene, should have answered or should have some guide on the assessment or the activity and so on. Macam buku-buku latihan anak-anak kita lah kan yang duk buat uh, apa, sas body lah whatever tu. Alright, tapi itu adalah buku. Tetapi ini adalah self uh, mungkin sangat ringkas based on that particular topic. Kalau PDF mungkin okay. uh, ada uh, based on the topic itself. Okay. So this is a SIM. So SIM can be comprehensive C, uh, PDF, can be just simple, simple PDF that you put based on the topics in your uh, uh, e-learning platform. Okay. So but it must include this. Okay. Jadi menjawab soalan awal-awal tadi, uh, boleh tak uh, adakah slide PowerPoint itu SIM? It is part of SIM. But it is not uh, the comprehensive sim lah. Okay, jadi saya balik-balik kepada uh, alright. Okay, so boleh ya PDF. Tadi saya menjawab soalan yang datang. Alright. You can also use broadcast strategy. Okay. For example, podcast. Right. Kalau tak nak buat alright, you can also rakam suara, letak dekat dalam uh, 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 Actually, the box, the box, saya panggil box, the kotak dalam you punya smart UMS kan? Uh, minggu pertama, minggu kedua, minggu ketiga kan? For example, so minggu pertama tu, satu box itu boleh dijadikan one seat. Meaning that dalam that particular box, you put resources. Okay, you put ta tajuk, you put the tajuk there. Okay, tajuk pertama adalah apa-apa-apa and then you put a resources. Okay, you can put as a uh, video, for example, you create a video or you letak YouTube, you embed YouTube dalam tu and then you have an activity based on the uh, YouTube and then you will have an assessment. Alright, so dalam satu kotak, one box in your Smart UIS, it can be one SIM for the topic. So this is a very comprehensive SIM but interactive. Or in the box, you can put some instruction and so on, the topic, learning outcome and so on. But then you upload the PDF, uh, SIM, and then student will be able to download that. Alright, so it is up to your design. Okay, tak kisah macam mana as long as you cover, um, as long as you cover all this. Okay, as you cover lah macam mana you nak arrange as long as semuanya ada. Okay. Okay and then mix mode or multimedia strategy. Okay. Meaning that you boleh mix lah kalau you nak letak kontak dia dalam PDF, you nak activity dia dalam uh, online dan sebagainya it can also it can also be done in mix mode. Alright. As long as, sebab saya dah cakap sebagai MQA punya auditor. So as long as I can see it, it is there in your online platform. Okay, kalau you guna yang publisher punya tadi, the uh, uh, sama ada kan kalau uh, saya tak ingat nama tadi. Uh, kalau katalah you guna sebab kat sometimes publisher dia ada own, dia punya own LMS kan. Jadi uh, biasanya dia punya SIM berada dekat dalam dia punya LMS, the publisher LMS. So what you can do is you can um, uh, link that that particular that particular SIM dengan dalam you punya LMS. Alright, you cannot just kata oh saya guna dia dekat sana. Okay tak boleh because the platform 
is the main learning platform. So, uh, for example, if you use my UMS, then it will be the main platform. Whatever yang you buat di luar Smart UMS, for example, you guna the SIM from the publisher, you must link it in your Smart UM, uh, UMS and there will be a clear instruction that the SIM is in the other platform. So you need, you must put an instruction uh, for self-instructional material. Please refer to this particular module and you have to uh, finish uh, doing the activity by Brapa Regulat. Okay, so must be clear on that. All right. And then you can also use online strategy. So, for example, kalau di US, kita ada credential. So, micro-credential is based on module. The micro-credential itself can be uh, considered as, can be considered as, um, uh, SIM, yeah, sebab dia ada uh, uh, micro learning outcomes in that ada dua saja ke learning outcomes sangat micro and then dia akan ada resources dan dia akan ada activity dan so also micro credential can also be seen as self instructional materials, okay, and then supplementary and complementary strategy mungkin you nak buat project work you nak buat you nak letak audio visual materials also can for self instructional materials the way you design is up to you however you must have this okay semua ni kena ada how you design is up to you because it is your topic all right maybe you want to start with quiz first okay masuk masuk dalam you punya sim okay let us uh, uh, test your uh, previous knowledge, for example. So, the talk is get to then baru you bagi resources and then you bagi activity and so on. Okay, it's up to your design. All right, so yang ini adalah uh, elements for uh, sim resources. So, you can letak, you can put, uh, yang tadi, you can also do a PDF. You can also do recorded video, okay, rakam video sendiri. Okay, you can also do podcast. I like to do podcast actually. So, but uh, I don't have to show my face. Okay, I just can describe uh, using podcast audio saja. You can do screencast. Okay, you can do narrated presentation and so on. Yang ini semua you can do. All right, for example, you can do interview videos. Okay, you do interview videos and you letak dalam you punya uh, platform and then you will uh, create activity from the uh, interview video. Okay, so ini janganlah um, rakaman video you mengajar saja tak bosan. So, video di mana uh, based on the topic and so on. Alright, you can look at content for example, or H5P. Alright, or you can look at video in the visit help sign mungkin you dalam operation room ke apa, letak satu video and then suruh student, the ODF student describe actually what happened in the video. So, it uh, actually related to your creativity. Macam mana you nak present the content. Alright. Uh, dia tak ada uh, kaedah yang uh, specific but as I said just now, mesti ada semua ini. Alright. Okay. Let me Ya, ada banyak soalan di sini. Alright. Okay, Dr. Tara boleh dapatkan gambar daripada website. Okay, betul. Unsplash boleh. Unsplash uh, sangat banyak gambarnya. Ataupun macam kami di USM, kami memang ada subscribe. Uh, Oh, nama ni dia tak ingat tapi memang sangat mahal lah di sana dalam ada website kita, kita boleh buat video and so on lah yang tu ada website yang kita memang universiti subscribe dan memang uh, berbaloi lah subscribe dan kita bagi pada semua pensyarah supaya mereka dapat uh, images uh, free images dan tak perlu cari di uh, internet lah so uh, mungkin itu inisiatif uh, universiti masing-masing alright Kalau nak slide boleh, slide, slide saya boleh dikongsi nanti saya bagi kepada uh, Erna. Okay. 
Apa pandangan doktor tentang lecture note atau record the audio video yang digunakan untuk syarah ke lari lari. Dibuat naik oleh pelajar ke dalam mana-mana platform termasuk media sosial seperti Instagram, Facebook, Twitter dan lain-lain. Okay, so yang itu sebenarnya terpulang pada pencarah. Ada pencarah yang dia tak kisah. If you don't like your students to upload your material in uh, social media, you must let them know lah. Okay, uh, you must let them know that these particular lectures are not allowed to be shared in social media. Alright, whatever in the uh, happen in the platform should be in the platform only. Sebab sometimes you kena cakap lah, your I, your your materials is copyrighted, for example. Okay, jadi you tak boleh uh, share. Kalau you punya you punya uh, bara, uh, apa? bahan adalah adalah uh, uh, creative common license under creative common so should be okay so you need to give them to let them know sebab student ini dia main belasah je tau they don't really know the copyright and so on sebab sekarang ini social media sangat meng menguasai pelajar-pelajar kita so you need to teach them and let them know what is the copyright for your material sebab mereka memang akan apa orang kata, guna saja tanpa minta kebenaran kita. So, biasanya whatever, uh, selalunya kelas saya lah, uh, the first week is about plagiarism and copyright. Okay, let them know. Alright. Kemudian, see one of the session of the channels, the suggestion of our colleague to developing the session of the university for me, deposit them in the UMSOER, yes. And then share the link you know, see, boleh jadi Alright. Sebab I think UMS have a very established OER. Okay, so you can do that as well. Alright. Okay, boleh tak program ODR di UA dijalankan tiga semester dalam setahun <coughs> dan ikut akuan pelajar setahun masa. Alright. Uh, some of the... Um, you private university they have these three semesters meaning that they have two long semesters and one uh, short semester however you need to design the semesters boleh ya sebab saya pernah tengok private university buat okay and it is accredited however you must also tetapi uh, untuk universiti awam ia juga bergantung kepada senat universiti ia juga bergantung kepada uh, kenapa you nak go beyond your 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 uh, academic uh, calendar and so on yang tu kena ada justification ya yeah, Dr Lim alright so uh, boleh ada justifikasi make that it is applicable okay can i get a copy of this Dr alright uh, ha Dr. Azri, this is a good question sebenarnya. Dia tanya pada Dr. Kenneth but I will answer this later. Okay, walaupun tanya pada Dr. Kenneth, I will highlight the is it possible for the scene to be considered as a publication. Alright, ah, yang saya akan kemukakan after this. Alright, sebab ada dalam MQA punya bukan requirement lah, suggestion. Alright. Okay, Dr. Kenneth jawab, in order to do this, you will have to go as an, ah, okay, register your ER. Okay, so, yes. So, yang ini, ah, uh, Dr. Kenneth jawab, pihak S. Alright, so, jadi saya tak jawab, tak nak. Gambar dan video dari Kemba.com boleh guna tak? Boleh. Boleh, meaning that if you do a video, for example kan, apa yang saya buat adalah saya rakam video saya guna handphone and then saya masuk dalam Canva and then saya download. Then it is yours. Okay, kalau yang free itu memang Canva dah bagi open license. Kalau you uh, subscribe to Pro Canva pun, it is uh, sebab you dah bayar. So whatever you download from Canva, the photo, your free photo itu adalah open uh, resource lah. So you can use that from Canva. Alright. Alright, uh, it is then done, some of my photographs have turned up in your undergrad thesis, betul. 
without acknowledgement. So what I would like to suggest, you know, uh, mungkin waktu orientasi, you can cakap, okay, the head of program need to let the students know, okay, dan selalu ingatkan pada student bahawasanya the copyright of the materials belong to the lecturer. So biasanya memang saya kalau setiap kelas saya yang baru saya akan highlightkan perkara ini lah. Jangan not sewenang-wenangnya belajar share kalau kita bahan-bahan uh, yang dari pesyarah. Okay. Okay, Dr. Alright. Uh, uh, nanti uh, kalau kalau you, uh, I terlupa, you just email me ya, azida at your my. Nanti I will share the, the link tak. I terlupa nak ambil you punya uh, uh, email. Alright. Okay. Uh, okay. At the end of the slide, ada saya punya email, nanti you email me, nanti I copy. I, 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 I hantar you all. Boleh? I tak sempat nak ambil you punya slide. Alright. Okay. Right. So, uh, other requirements for ODL. Okay, yang ini as I mentioned tadi, I already mentioned about appointing full-time coordinator, leader, alright. Uh, kalau untuk program, if you are um, having a program like sciences program and so on, the program coordinator should be uh, from the area lah, ya. Yeah? Maksudnya, um, ia ada uh, seorang pakar dalam bidang anda, the program, however, Uh, kalau mereka juga ada pengetahuan dalam ODL should be lagi bagus. Alright. Okay. Pengetahuan ya bukan uh, expert tetapi kalau the program coordinator I pernah mengikuti khusus secara ODL and so on. Pernah melalui training tentang ODL. It should be much better lah for the program. Okay. And then A conducive learning environment and proper facilities for the execution of practical based training in line with the requirement. Oh, sorry. Oh. All right. When we say about conducive learning environment, you must remember that we are doing the ODL program. Okay, and then your students might be not uh, within the maksudnya dia they will be like jauh mungkin uh, the distance within the students and the university will be might be uh, kalau the UMS maybe pelajar berada di Kuala Lumpur for example so how they are going to have practical training or hands on training kalau mereka adalah ODL students, ya, yeah? remember we are trying to cater the need of students from everywhere. Okay, mungkin mereka ada di uh, Qatar, for example. So, how are you going to do to execute the practical based training kalau mereka perlukan, uh, perlu melakukan practical based training? So, maybe, okay, maybe if you need this, you can have some uh, MOU ke, Ataupun agreement, mungkin tak sampai MOU or MOA tetapi mungkin you ada agreement with other institution yang ada provide, they are providing the similar facilities and so on, you have agreement. Kalau ada agreement, kena ada dalam the document itself ataupun kenyatakan, kena letak the appendix, we have agreement with uh, UKM to use their facilities uh, uh, pada minggu ke berapa untuk this particular uh, program, for example. And then we have also appoint a lecturer from UKM to help us with monitoring the students while doing the practical training. Okay, okay. so this is actually what we need to know, what the auditor need to know, whether, you know, you have a uh, figure out the need of that particular program, kalau dia perlu training, macam mana dia nak buat. Okay, if let's say you have a virtual lab, for example, then the virtual lab, kami nak tengok waktu kami, uh, the preparation of the virtual lab for the ODL students. So, the conducive learning environment must not necessarily 
uh, fikirkan the platform itself but however uh, how you cater the need of the students to achieve the learning outcome the course learning outcome it is very important okay and then okay encourage innovation in teaching learning and assessment okay yang ini penting all right so we don't actually or uh, we don't only encourage innovation however we do check okay the analytics have you prepared the analytics how the student access so i i think if let's say in ums you have the smart ums or in other uh, uas you have moodle and so on so the analytics of the student access should be able to be uh, uh, uh assess okay by the program coordinator and so on to be able for them to monitor the student learning activity meaning that when the student access the system okay how many times they access per week have they uh assess the scene for example so the analytics tools is very important okay to monitor students the online uh, the ODL students learning, okay? Uh, kalau uh, conventional, if the conventional teaching, kalau mereka hadir kelas, kita boleh nampak. However, for ODL student, we are not being able to see them, okay? Uh, kalau, if let's say we don't do the synchronous timetabling, okay, kalau ada, maksudnya kita buat just uh, uh, once in the fortnight, for example. Alright, so for the weeks that uh, we do asynchronous how do we, we monitor the students so we have to look at the analytics all right we have to see the participation in the scene that's why in the self-instructional material you need to have activities you need to have assessment okay formative assessment so that it can be considered as participation for your students all right and then uh we must obtain feedback from stakeholders, from the students, all right, or from their parents, for example, or from other other important um, stakeholders to improve the delivery of the program outcome. So we must ask the student, okay, do, did you uh, is the theme provided by the lecturers, okay, Kadida, all right. Uh, can you learn from them and so on and how can we improve the scene and so on okay do you need people uh, the lecturers to do the synchronous learning more frequently okay so this need to be done all right all right okay so this is some um guidelines okay on odl student support service Okay, so HEP, higher education provider, must offer appropriate orientation. Ah, okay. So let's say you are going to embark on ODL program. Okay, kalau a uh, student biasa, okay, uh, we have the orientation one week orientation program, for example. So how do you do that for ODL students? However, I think this won't be a problem anymore because we have gone through this during the COVID-19, okay, our uh, orientation, uh, orientation week have been done online. So you can follow that, how we uh, make available the documentation, the activities, the whatever information via online, okay? So they must have appropriate orientation it's and then developmental or remedial support to assist all ODL students. Okay, so including new student, incoming student, and student with special needs. All right. So, a uh, developmental. For example, yeah, uh, you don't just assume that your ODL student will be able to access your platform. Uh, uh, dengan mudah-mudah sajalah okay you don't know them okay you don't know their technical skill they don't, you don't know their uh, internet availability and so on 
so that's that's why you need a remedial support kalau you suddenly you just figure out you know they have problem and so on so how are you going to cater the need of the ods student ods student ada pelbagai ya kita tak expect sometimes so kita ingat dia ada semua but they are not ready okay so yang itu sangat penting and then uh, students with special need okay special needs mungkin bukan okay they must not only uh, physically uh, disabled student for example okay masalah physical we might have student okay sebab when they <coughs> when they enroll in our course let's see the student hasn't got interviews okay so meaning that your your entry requirement doesn't require uh, uh, the program uh, the students to be interviewed to enroll in the program tiba tiba bila dia masuk tengok tengok dia rabut okay. rabut okay so what can you do with the student who cannot see properly they are not blind but they cannot see clearly so your sim okay self instruction material must also consider them mungkin the the font of the powerpoint or whatever uh, pdf that you have prepared must be like four times bigger and so on so you must know this this is student support service for odl student all right so all this clear information all right and then different learning challenges and so on all right and then non-residential nature of odl learners also need to be considered all right it is very important of the student support services lah for ODL student, all right? And then ODL academic staff. For now, sometimes we just uh, assume that sebab dah melalui COVID-19, uh, uh, our uh, lecturers, our academic staff, uh, biasanya kita anggap, okay, dia telah melalui the, the uh, ODL, ODL proses sebab dia telah melalui teaching and learning uh, online uh, semasa COVID-19. However, yang itu pengalaman, apa orang kata, ad hoc punya pengalaman, right? mereka mendapat, they have the experience because of the COVID-19. However, okay, for the ODL, academic staff, you must have the university or the, the program or the department must make sure that they are current with their knowledge and skill, all right, both in their discipline, okay, as well as in their pedagogical, okay, pedagogical, uh, pedagogy, kaedah mengajar, all right, andragogy, uh, adult learning theory, okay, how they teach, uh, adult learners okay and then technicals okay katalah buat synchronous learning uh, suddenly uh, you know you cannot connect and so on you know suddenly your student said uh, doctor i cannot uh, log in because of this and this and how you cater how the academic staff cater the need of the student all right so they need to have a, they need to be given training okay on especially on technical skills through ODL, okay? And then, ah, yang ini yang uh, saya nak menjawab, siapa tadi? Dr. Nazri ke tanya yang tentang, uh, can, can the C replace the publication? Alright, okay. So, mesti ada policy, ya. Eh? This, kena, this particular policy and procedure must be written down in MQA01. Okay. How do you have, what is your policy in terms of, for example, lecturer dah buat SIM. SIM is not easy to do. All right. They have to maybe record their video, their personal video. They have might have to prepare a lot of things. They must, must uh, design the uh, assessment they must design the activity so that it can be a very self-directed learning so it takes time sometimes more than writing a, a paper yeah so mesti nyatakan okay the, the hcp 
Okay. The HEP must clearly see in the document what incentive to reward innovation in ODL. Okay. Jadi apa kalau mereka buat satu innovation? Alright. Innovation termasuklah SIM. Yeah? SIM is can be considered as innovation. So apa yang mereka dapat? For example, salary increment for example ataupun they will be paid over and above for the SIM or uh, replacement to SIM equal to one Scopus publication. Uh, itu, itu saya cakap je lah ya. It is your own policy, your institution policy can discuss with uh, the higher uh, admins and so on so that um, it is transparent and the, the, the lecturers will know what they will get from their effort in producing, uh, in teaching the ODL program. Sebab ODL program is not as easy as uh, the conventional teaching. All right, it is not like you put the all the resources online and then you teach similar to the uh, conventional program. It is not like that. You must have innovation so that the student will will learn. Okay, sometimes you think that you put resources, PowerPoint dah. Student buka, dia tengok, baca, 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 do. So, ODL is not like that. Alright, we want an interactive then kalau pensyarat itu ada effort, how uh, the institution give incentive to the lecturers. Okay. Alright. So, this is the overall uh, ODL system. Yeah? So, more the academic staff this is actually the platform platform ni hanya untuk support the academic staff and how the academic staff to the students okay so for the academic staff we need access we need training we need content teach the content we consider teaching and learning activities the materials variety of assessment and so on and for the students you need to have orientation access training innovative teaching and learning assessment and analytics to monitor your students all right so this is the uh, odl environment that you need to prepare for your lecturers okay lecturers will need to be prepared yeah bukan only the students and odl support we will have you will have you need to have the help desk satu all right help desk for the students and for the lecturers to uh, to uh, minta pertolongan lah to seek help all right and then uh, help desk also monitor for example monitor the um, the platform code, code, uh, platform crash server hang and so on so the help desk uh, will uh, be able to support that all right uh, facilities all right and then what facilities facilities untuk odl is uh, different from the conventional facilities for odl um, is virtual faci facilities all right and uh, kalau conventional you are going to provide the uh, computer lab lah physical library uh, you will have student uh, lounge for example but how do you a provide facilities to ODL students. And they can launch online launch for your ODL students. How do you do that? All right, it is possible. Okay, and then uh, feedback. How do you receive feedback from your students? Okay, ODL support help desk will help with uh, the feedback. And then security system assessment and so on. So let's see, you have exam online. All right, so how do you provide security to the exam online system? Do you have e-proctoring? Okay, how do you monitor the vetting process? How do you do the exam online? What is the procedure for exam online? Meaning that, okay, let's say your exam is two hours. All right, two hours exam. So, uh, how do you give time for student to log in? Okay, for example, you need to have uh, measures. Okay, first, student will be given 15 minutes uh, before they log in, uh, before they can assess the uh, exam questions. All right, uh, 15 minutes for them to do the declaration and so on. Then, after 15 minutes, they will be able to click on the exam paper 
and then they will do the exam paper for two hours, for example, and then after two hours, they will have um, some time, 45 minutes or five, half an hour for them to cater the problem of submitting or whatever. Lah. Okay, so that particular information no, need to be clear. Uh, need to be clear on the security. And for example, if you do the vetting online, what is the process of process of vetting online? Okay, tapi biasanya kalau dalam keadaan biasa, you can do the vetting face-to-face, uh, -face, kan? Boleh duduk uh, dengan the, the, the lecturers and so on, you can do the vetting online. However, if you do the vetting uh, offline, okay, face-to-face, -face, what is the measures when you upload the exam to the system okay how do you make sure that student cannot hack the system or you know somebody else cannot hack the system or other lecturers will be able to uh, you know is uh, cannot assess the question and so on so that is um the documentation that you need to highlight okay of the security so the ods support bukan hanya technical support it, it also the unit exam uh, uh, for example the unit exam will prepare the, the exam unit will prepare the documentation exam, the exam procedure of exam and so on what uh, the how the odl students can access and so on so it's a very comprehensive all right so let me just skip this one first because the, um, okay, let me answer it. Does the institution or university have to design a space specific and user license? Vela for the ODL. This may be necessary in order to limit the liability of the university in terms of data breach also to limit infringement of copyright and so on. All right. Uh, by the university. Uh, the Kenneth, yes. Okay, meaning at the moment in Kupa, ODL, we don't require that, but it is advisable for you to do that so that you know it is clear for the lecturers and the students. Okay, so you can do that. And for the program leader, must it be new appointment for ODL? Is it possible the same policy, both conventional and ODL program? Yes, meaning that you're in Dr. Azrul, meaning that your e-learning uh, coordinator, existing uh, e-learning coordinator can be also be ODL expert. So as the e-learning coordinator, the requirement of the ODL and so on, and well versed on the ODL requirement, then you will be All right, Dr. Nazri, uh, the question was for Dr. Kenes. So, Nafayati, do we need to have this in the program or this that's of the program? Do we need to have this? Meaning that all the subjects need to have C. All right. Uh, we will check that actually because when you submit the uh, MTA01, you will also either, for example, if you have the PDF version of the of the C, you need to submit the PDF version. Okay. Or if let's say you don't have it in PDF version. During the meetings, the OER meeting, we will see lah. Tapi nasib lah kat we So maybe, because, you know, in a program, you have MP, you have uh, compulsory elective and so on. So mungkin elective you, uh, MP, you can use the same scene with other program and so on. Tapi mostly the required mesti ada lah. Tetapi let's see. Uh, you are starting, okay, you just started, okay, you baru nak hantar MTA01, kemudian uh, your intake will be August 2021, jadi 
mungkin you tak prepare lah sampai year four punya scene kan sebab baru nak offer so the scene can be only for the first year atau first semester kalau you nak ambil three subjects for the first semester for example then the three subjects you dah buat and then after that you can gradually develop the scene okay so tak ada tiba-tiba aku nak ada you know, 100% of the program ada kita taklah sekejap itulah kan alright yes every topic of every subject under OPL require betul alright it require sim but you can do it the sim tetapi kita nak tengok yang first year or first semester should be ada untuk you have prepared so no more than the sim it can be used for the L or not right dah ada, kita akan check the scene, kita akan cakap dah uh, me and the auditor I will check, okay, whether the resources tu sesuai, whether the assessment is sesuai, so untuk uh, professional, professional uh, accreditation, at least you can ada yang uh, first semester so that we can have a look, alright Sixty percent of the subjects, at least sixty percent of the line, meaning that uh, at least sixty percent of the subjects need offered via OD. Meaning that the other forty percent can be offered via face. Okay, all right. 60% of the cost in the program. Okay, 60% is for the program. Meaning that if in the program you have 100 courses, 60 kena, 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 60 of the out of 100 courses need to be offered via ODL. The can be done face to face. All right. So, saya sebenarnya, saya, saya bukan uh, cara ODL di pusat, um, pusat uh, our school of distance education. Bukan pesara uh, distance, uh, school of distance education, saya pesara school of education studies. Alright, so kalau kita sebab kita punya last e-learning SM. So, yeah, okay. the system of uh, PJJ uh, bawah penjelasan saya juga lah. Alright. So, dari aspek pencayaan pelajar, kalau kita tengok di USM, PJJ adalah uh, kita buat PJJ itu berdasarkan uh, part time. Satu. Ianya berdasarkan juga uh, program sedia ada. Maksudnya program default di pusat pengajian, di sini kita panggil pusat pengajian, pusat pengajian bukan duduk di PJ, dan di replicate sama sahaja mereka akan buat example Bachelor of Management di School of Management akan dapat juga Bachelor of Management uh, di PJ, sama sahaja cuma delivery adalah berlain dari, dari segi pencapaian saya rasa tidak ada masalah dari segi pencapaian you can see that Uh, pencapaiannya hampir sama dengan students yang ada di uh, yang presiden retired SM ini tak berdiri di tempat satu dia DJ in USM kaedah je agak berlainan di mana kita ada intensif okay we have hampir 60% of the program uh, 80% of SL Okay, remember, 60% of the courses, 80% of the SLT, okay, can be be done online, please, okay. So, uh, 20% can be done offline. So, in the SM, our PJJ have that 20% intensive course, whereby waktu mereka datang uh, intensive course, they, they will to the lab, 
ini kan kita jumpa dia meet dia lecturers and so on face to face je. so during the intensive week week they are required to come to us cuti kena pergi cuti dan datang so the system in usm pjj usm is quite different but we can't see the different lah tak tak dia tak 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 um, berbeza dari satu pencapaian we can see that it is almost the same almost only at our uh, resided okay. so itu yang saya nak jawab ya uh, kemudian no kreatif kami example of simple that we can do okay, hari ni saya tak prepare pula so insyaallah saya ada lagi satu session tentang table for tadi baru terfikir okay, kenapa saya tak share one of the sim okay contoh sim uh, insyaallah sim Sebenarnya saya nak share sim ya. Saya so kita akan uh, tengok table four. Alright. Uh, ya, hari ini rasanya tak ada sim lah. Alright. Okay. Uh, try so ya. Okay. For a set to be created ODL, it need to be eighty percent of L E E C L. No hidayah. Sorry. Kata no hidayah. Uh, perlu 80% of SLT SDS kali sisi pet offer OBR 10 of the student time need to be delivered Okay, ini adalah uh, requirement dia lah. Okay. So, can we apply for OPR from provisional accreditation or we need to wait for full accreditation? Uh, uh, you using the existing uh, program, you need to wait for the full accreditation. Okay, kalau you duplicate saja the program and then you must have the full accreditation, the program memang dah kena ada apa orang kata dah di di review for full accreditation uh, panel datang melawat tengok course itu okey semua baru boleh embark on ODL tetapi di sebelah uh, ODL sekarang ada fast baru di mana you can apply ODL for uh, new program so why not you apply for ODL for new program okay new program program yang akan siap ni tapi you ubah sikit so that it will be a new program that can apply for uh, ODL punya program. Uh, saya lah jadi supaya you tak payah tunggu dia the existing um, existing apa namanya uh, program to to have a full accreditation. Uh, jadi you, you ubah sikit macam tu kan uh, so that it will be a new program lah tapi lebih kurang sama tapi ada sedikit program. Okay, the term we do not give away is devil from program sedia ada. Adakah PO mesti sama dengan program sedia ada? Um, ya, yeah. okay, program learning sama tetapi uh, boleh ada perubahan program delivery development sebenarnya tidak banyak berubah. So boleh jadi uh, sama dengan PO sedia ada. Alright. So delivery saya yang boleh. Program tiga semester, dua semester uh, online, conduct via ODL tetapi semester terakhir student perlu full untuk latihan kita. Masih boleh dikira sebagai ODL atau tidak? Ya Dr. Nurul Huda as long as Uh, as long as uh, 60% uh, 60% right? 40% can be done via video. Saya faham maksudnya yang asal kena ada clinical kena uh, buat practical and so on so boleh 
boleh dijalankan as long as ianya tidak melebihi 40% of the um, uh, courses yang di-offered secara uh, ODL. Okay. Okay. So, saya soalan sebelum saya pergi ke program standard. itu boleh boleh terus ya if we ah uh, at night uh, ODL okay. jadi tu ada is particular practice for product division of the business and lain lagi so tu yang saya yang ini saya nak apa stress be dengan Everyone, right. so I said, ah, all right. What? Yeah. Dr. Azida, your sound is breaking. Uh, maybe line connection. <laughs> Uh, dia dah nak tengah hari memang saya akan macam teruk sikit. Alright. Okay tak saya tutup uh, ni. A much better. Alright. Okay. So okay. So ODL refer provision. So yang ini memang saya ambil tadi dari the, the this particular document. Okay. Kemudian I would like to highlight yang lain lebih kurang sama ya. Okay, then in the document, remember all MQA uh, program education, we are looking at outcome-based education. So this is uh, your learning outcomes, PLO, program learning outcomes, your CLO need to have to, to, to be able to um, uh see the abilities okay uh, the outcomes or abilities should be demonstrated upon completion of educational program so this is the reference okay for obe so meaning that when you kalau you you are doing a new program so make sure that all the plo and clo need to cater the obe all right and then and this one is about the experts all right so not only academic expertise in the courses however education experts from various disciplines uh, who have been trained okay or who have been considered experienced in effective ODL teaching and learning methodology so meaning that in your institution you can have the people from the e uh, learning center to help you okay they might not be 
uh, expert in um, your area, but they can help. They have experience in effective ODL teaching and learning. All right, so it is in the document page five. Kemudian, okay. Ha. So for area number one, okay. Kalau dalam dokumen biasa dia tak ada ODL ini. Alright. Remember most of us, okay, kalau saya ikut the the soalan-soalan uh, uh, tadi, kebanyakannya mungkin from non ODL institution. Okay, bukan daripada wawasan, bukan daripada OUM, bukan daripada Al Madinah International University. Al Madinah is a ODL. Okay. So <coughs> so Meaning that the program must be consistent with and supportive, supportive of the vision, mission goal and ODL policy of the HEP. So if your university would like to embark on ODL, mesti ada ODL policy. Kalau tak ada, kena buatlah. Alright, meaning that you must highlight that in the document. The university, our the uh, uh, the HEP have updated their ODL policy. The ODL policy is whatever in appendix, whatever. So kena ada the thing of ODL policy. Saya rasa ia ni bukan satu perkara yang susah. It is a tambahan, just additional document um, to support the mission and goals of the HEP lah. Mungkin menambah. Um, Uh, apa policy of the HEP. So kena tambah sikit tentang ODL policy which is saya rasa untuk kat dalam keadaan sekarang it won't be that hard because you have uh, gone through the uh, online teaching and learning and we think that ODL should be one of the policy of most of the HEP so you can actually add extra to that. Alright and then the program must be considered only after a need assessment. So yang inilah Kena buat market survey tadi yang saya nyatakan dari awal. Alright, this standard must be read together with 1.2.2 area 1. Okay. So 6.1.2 in area 6. Alright. So yang ini, you must clear. Okay. And then, okay, yang lain-lain ni yang saya tidak highlight merah ini uh, yang biasa. Okay, yang biasa yang sama macam the conventional program. Okay. Alright, so must consult stakeholder. You mesti tahu keperluan. Alright, uh, stakeholder juga from the uh, other um, other experts dalam yang pakar dalam bidang. Okay, other experts who are experts in the program. Okay, but outside the like external examiner, you must consult them to ask them whether this program uh, is suitable to be delivered via ODL. Uh, maksudnya kena adalah orang luar yang setuju bahawa sebenarnya uh, program ini boleh dikendalikan secara ODL and also ODL expert lah. Jadi uh, mungkin seorang ODL expert, mungkin seorang uh, uh, expert in the program. Okay. Tapi dia mesti juga bagi um, pandangan tentang whether it is suitable for the program to be conducted online. Okay. Uh, okay. This one 1.2.25. Nampak tak di situ? Okay. Satu, department must establish um, must establish mechanism or system where of where all forms of interaction and delivery of internet. Bukan sahaja, okay, it is not only your online learning platform, however, a system whereby your student will be able to assess their marks, student will be able to um, see their progress and so on. So integrated mechanism or system. All right, so I think there will be no problem as well because uh, I think most of us will uh, have this uh, integrated system for our uh, institution. And then uh, the program must involve provision and appropriate self-instructional material for self-directed learners. Uh, okay, must have. Jadi memang wajib ada the SIM. 
Okay. And then there must be a unit as section devoted to design and development of SIM. Okay. Mesti ada unit or section yang uh, yang uh, menyokong ya. Ataupun memang ada seorang instructional designer yang bantu uh, pensyarah menyediakan SIM ini. Okay. Ha, so, yang ini semua ada dalam dokumen COPA ODL which is uh, yang saya terangkan tadi dia ada di sini. Whatever yang saya terangkan memang berasal daripada di COPA. So, untuk keterangan yang lebih uh, terperinci, the, uh, you can refer to this particular document. Alright. Okay. See, it mentioned about copyright law and best practices must be in place and observe. Meaning that you can decide lah. Okay, whether you are going to use OER or you are going to put copyrighted materials and so on. So you, uh, sometimes it can be decide, decided by the lecturer. Kadang-kadang lecturer, they are not um, comfortable to put their resources as OER. Okay, we can encourage but we cannot paksa dia letak bahan dia secara OER. So, you must have some guidelines ke, some information that help the lecturers to, okay, if you would like to do, uh, to to put your, uh, to include your materials as an OER, what you should do. Okay, if you would like to copyright your materials, what you should do. Okay, so, uh, this is highlighted in this particular document. All right. And then, uh, you, you, not you, the, the department must decide how do you interact, okay, how can lecturers and instructors uh, can interact uh, together, okay, synchronous ke, asynchronous ke, or uh, combination of, all right. So, you kena dah tahu dah, memang ada arahan pada pensyarah you. Boleh buat macam ni, you tak boleh buat macam ni supaya pencerah clear. Alright, but you can ada guideline but be flexible. Okay. Jadi kalau ada schedule face-to-face -face session, alright, kena ada jadual lah. Alright. And then, uh, it can be done physically or electronically uh, mediated. Okay. Uh, yang ini, kena ada full-time program, program leader or coordinator. So, yang ini pakar dalam bidang. Tapi kalau dia ada pengetahuan dalam ODL, is an advantage. Okay, this is area one and then area two. Ha, okay. Remember policy which govern online assessment must be put in place. Okay, including academic integrity moderation. Okay, by a qualified moderator and progression. In addition, specialized needs have to be taken into consideration to cater for student that may distributed over various geographical, geographical location due the nature of ODL. Jadi, all right, it is important. Let's say uh, you are in Sabah, the program is in UMS, then the, the, the uh, students are in Semenanjung, for example. So, how are you going to do exams now? For example, in USM, we are doing exam online with proctoring, for example. All right. And then, so uh, when we do the proctoring, so it is much easy, much more easier. But some, the proctoring is expensive. Okay, if let's say just one program, you are not what uh, ODL and do the exam online, mungkin uh, tidak apa kata. It is not. Uh, uh, advisable to use proctoring lah. Sebab kalau beli sikit dia jadi mahal lah kan. Lagi mahal. So maybe you might consider okay the ODL student okay macam UTM what they did during this particular examination they uh, contact the universities you university awam you know to help them with monitoring their students taking exam they can take the exam in the uh, UAS, other university awam punya lab and so on. So you must have the policy what you are going to do the to cater, okay, to govern the online assessment. Alright, so mesti ada step by step. Kalau tak boleh buat macam ni, macam mana online assessment akan dilakukan. Mungkin exam tidak dilakukan secara, kalau you are not doing online exam, so how are you going to do that? Okay, and then if let's say you are doing exam 
as, a, as an online without proctoring, how do you know that the students, the ODL students who are taking the exam is the real students who are learning with you? All right, the lecturer pun kadang-kadang tak kenal student jumpa dalam online saja. So how do you make sure that the students are really the person who, who, apa, uh, who, who has been studying in UMS, for example. So we still have the procedure, macam mana you identify. That's why macam USM, we use the proctoring because kalau proctoring, termasuk kita akan nampak, termasuk mereka akan tunjuk muka dulu, then dia kena letak the student identification dulu, and then uh, ada prosedur-prosedur tertentu. Uh, baru dia boleh access the uh, paper kan. Uh, so mungkinlah itu boleh dilakukan. Tapi kalau tak guna proctoring, how do you recognize the student? So these are the things that you need to consider lah for online assessment. Okay, kena pastikan pelajar yang uh, hadir exam itu adalah pelajar kita lah. Alright. Uh, so there must be a policy, policies and mechanism. Alright, for the security, credibility and so on lah. Jadi sebab, okay, the assessment of ODS student adalah berlainan. For example, if they are doing presentation, alright, so uh, how do you do presentation, You tapi tak perlulah terlalu, terlalu apa orang kata detail sangat dekat guideline. So, tapi at least you uh, make sure that the assessment is reliable, okay, consistent, okay, fair actually. Fair for the students, fair the lecturers and so on. Remember, when you embark on ODS, saya rasa kebanyakan pecarah dah melalui dalam uh, uh, satu dua semester ini, when we teach online, the burden of teaching online is actually much more than teaching face to face. Okay, you can prepare the scene and so on then. Jadi, uh, mungkin kita kena um, ada polisi tentang perkara tersebut. Alright. Then, uh, yang lain yang saya tidak highlightkan warna merah, kotak merah ini sebenarnya sama macam ada uh, the, 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 um, the uh, kopa biasa ya. Sekejap saya tengok soalan. Can we do face-to-face -face final exam? Yes, you can, Dr. Mawar ni. Meaning that sebab kita ada, uh, the remember just now, we have 80% of student SLT uh, online. Jadi kita ada 20% yang tidak online kan? Jadi SLT, the SLT covers the teaching and learning as well as assessment. Jadi, uh, boleh lah. Buat kalau exam, Tak nak buat uh, online, you would like to do it uh, face to face, so tak ada masalah. Boleh saja dilakukan sebab ianya tidak melebihi 20%. Okay. <coughs> Kemudian. Student support services. Okay, satu perkara, okay, one thing that you need to remember if let's say in the conventional class, okay, conventional non-ODL program, kita kena provide the uh, curricular, co-curricular activity kan? Alright, so jadi untuk ODL student macam mana pula? Uh, so, you need to highlight. Biasanya kalau ODL for adult learners for example and they are doing part time, kita biasanya kita uh, faham bahawa sebenarnya uh, mungkin mereka tidak dapat mengikuti co-curricular activities mengikut uh, yang disediakan oleh HEP. However, you can also organize co-curricular curricular activities for the student. Mungkin you, it is done online ke, mungkin nak buat pertandingan chess online ke, whatever lah kan. Kalau boleh, it is advisable for you to do that. Tapi kadang-kadang kita faham juga sebab mereka adalah ODS student. Kalau boleh, why not buat supaya mereka ada sense of belonging to the university. Alright. Okay. And then, satu perkara, 
ODL learners may face specific the different learning challenges. So they value immediate and personal interaction with academic staff through the online platform. That's why sometimes I encourage lecturers to have chat online. Okay, chat dekat dalam, I think Smart UMS pun boleh chat. You can chat, you can arrange, okay. Uh, ataupun the support service pun boleh buat, okay, uh, chat session with lecturers. Pukul berapa, pukul berapa, and then, you know, they can chat, ask questions. Either the staff, the academic staff do it for their own course, or the, the support service, okay, can do for, you know, for general uh, query of the student, okay. Uh, chat service for student, ataupun memang dekat dalam website, Memang ada bot, okay, uh, dah decide, okay, uh, ada satu chat box kat situ, alright, uh, if you have any question, please ask here, our team will uh, reply to you immediately, macam yang kalau ada DG, uh, telecommunication kan, ataupun baru-baru uh, ni saya ada masalah dengan Ninja Van, package saya tak sampai-sampai setelah dua minggu, so saya pergi website dia, ada satu chat box, I just type dekat situ, dan akhirnya uh, dia jawab dan akhirnya selesaikan masalah saya. Macam itulah. So, uh, ada seorang teknik, uh, salah seorang technical teams yang bertugas untuk menjawab uh, soalan di website. So, it is, you know, kalau boleh, patut ada sedemikian so that you can help the ODL learners. Okay, jadi ianya sebenarnya tidaklah mudah untuk menjalankan the ODL. Right, let me just have a look at the question. Can we do 20% for field work, yes you can, it's up to you. Okay, nanti it's for, for table 4, kita akan tengok the table 4 itself dan macam mana you nak bahagikan table 4 tersebut. Jadi tak semestinya uh, you nak buat exam online ke ataupun you nak buat the whole the class, uh, whole class online ke. So ianya bergantung kepada table 4 yang you sediakan that you prepared for your course. So if let's see the 20% will be filled work, then do it. For example, people who are in like in USM, we have the school of housing, building and planning whereby we have architects, architecture course, we have uh, interior design course, we have whereby they need to have field work, they need to be in a studio, for example, so they might need some interaction face to face. So they can arrange, the academic staff can arrange the table for so that it can cater the 20% to be face to face. Jadi dia boleh capai the uh, CEO for the cost. Okay, untuk kursus saja. Uh, conventional 8 kali pertemuan dengan pelajar. Jika dua kali pertemuan pertama, dua kali pelajar akan face to face dan sebagainya and blended boleh ke? Kalau ia mencapai uh, sebab kita tak pasti khusus itu adalah 140 credits ke ataupun 120 credits ke. Alright, kalau kita kata 8 kali pertemuan, 2 kali pertemuan pertama, 2 kali pertemuan akhir adalah face to face. Kalau ianya, jawapan saya adalah Dr. Zaki, if the pertemuan pelajar adalah uh, cukup bukan cukup Maksudnya hanya 20% itu adalah face to face dan the other uh, 80% adalah ODL tak kisah macam mana you nak arrange. Meaning that you boleh arrange awal, akhir, tengah, is up to you. Alright. Uh, so 56 credit out of credit. Uh, jadi kena kira lah. Uh, 50, kalau 56 credit out of 120 credit saya rasa terlebih tu. So you're going to kill 20% of, of uh, the 120 credit should be online. Eh, no, sorry, should be, can be, bukan should be, can be face to face. But 80% should be online. Uh, so you're going to kill equal credit. All right. Ah. Uh, Satu perkara, one thing about ODL, alright, kalau program biasa, we uh, usually we follow the um, normal standards lah kan. Okay, kalau uh, nak masuk universiti uh, awam, kita ikut UPU and so on lah, right, the normal standards. Tapi untuk program ODL, you can consider 
uh, a clear criteria kena tulis kena nyatakan clear criteria and process for student selection and including student from apel okay jadi apel uh, student with pengalaman dia ada apel a and apple c apel bukan apple eh apel a and apple c okay jadi uh, kena consider dan kena nyatakan kalau student through apple apple c apakah uh, kriteria dia and so on okay kena ada alright biasanya odl memang kita consider students with previous experience and we are looking at adult learners yang dah ada experience dan sebagainya jadi kena ada requirement lah for example kalau student dia adalah seorang uh, pembantu perubatan for example lah dia nak masuk dia nak ada degree in whatever so requirement dia dan apakah uh, experience yang perlu ada untuk dia mencapai apple, apple A and apple C okay So, kena clear tu. Alright. Ha, so, yang ini saya ada mention. Okay, Dr. Zaki menyatakan Apple tadi ada ke? Ni ada ya? Uh, ada standard untuk Apple A and Apple C boleh Google dan saya rasa sekejap saya check. Uh, ada uh, semalam saya tengok. Ada uh, taklimat Apple A and Apple C by MQA kalau tak silap saya. Uh, nah ni hari terbuka Apple from MQA. Hari terbuka ini dilakukan pada hari Khamis ini. Okey boleh take note ya. Uh, 18 Februari 2021 9 pagi hingga 1 tengah hari. Uh, via Zoom. So ada taklimat Apple Q, Apple A, Apple C. So ada tiga uh, ada tiga Apple yang akan diterangkan uh, tentang Apple ni. So bolehlah hadir untuk uh, mengetahui bahawa uh, tentang Apple. Okey jadi uh, anda boleh uh, tahu lebih lanjut macam mana nak letak kriteria for Apple ya dalam your punya program ODL nanti. Okay so kemudian saya teruskan the department must offer uh, appropriate orientation. Okay yang ni saya dah nyatakan tadi. Alright. So kemudian kena offer support service for non-residential nature. Okay kemudian juga ha, an effective induction to the program must be made available to new student to promote self-directed learning. Okay. Satu perkara yang saya ingin sarankan, I would like to advise, okay, uh, during the induction program, for example, all right, you must highlight the, pro, uh, the PPT, the program coordinator must highlight that the ODL is supposed to be a very self-directed learning or self-managed learning. Okay, jadi mungkin ada guidelines how to be a self-directed learner. Ha, mungkin ada expert yang boleh bantu dalam sediakan guide supaya pelajar jelas bahawasanya they are learning at their, their own uh, time okay, and anywhere. Alright, however they must for ODI program, you they must follow the academic program calendar as well lah. Ha, jadi mungkin ada guide di situ how to be a self-directed learner. That will be helpful lah for the students. Kemudian Okay, satu perkara uh, bila kita tengok uh, uh, di sini ya, it start from here HDP is expected to search for and appoint a best suited candidate to serve it programs in open, transparent and fair manner. Ya? Jadi maksudnya this is academic staff For academic staff, okay, katalah you dah ada program yang you dah offer. You have offered the program okay, before and then you are duplicating the program for uh, ODL. Okay. Uh, okay, it is okay for you to uh, uh, the, 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 the same the same staff academic, academic staff to uh, teach the program the new ODL program however 
Remember the old the ODL teaching is differ is different from the traditional face to face teaching. Jadi, as an auditor, we expect uh, your lecturers, okay, your academic staff that is being appointed to teach the ODL program should have ample um, knowledge and skill to do ODL. Okay, they might be expert in their area in their uh, expertise however they might not be experts in ODL tapi selepas COVID-19 ni saya rasa ini uh, kurang masalah sikit lah tentang perkara ini tapi kita mesti tahu bahawasanya uh, ianya sangat perlu so mungkin perlu highlight that uh, uh, you have actually train the lecturers for example dan sebagainya lah okay so Ah, uh, saya tengok soalan dulu. Masa pun dah nak tamai. Jap. Jika calon ada appel T6, apa lagi syarat lain untuk dia memohon masuk universiti? Saya rasa soalan ni Dr. Rosri boleh hadir dan tanya kepada uh, tanya kepada dalam hari terbuka appel ni. Saya pun tak berapa pasti sebenarnya sebab Uh, dia ada different different appeal, ada different requirement. Jadi saya tak pasti uh, uh, apa yang diperlukan untuk Apple T6 ni. Alright. Jadi uh, perlu tanya di sana lah. Tapi kalau kita ikut dia kalau dalam pengetahuan saya contohnya kalau pernah dengan nama Izat Izat Azhar Azhar, okay. Dia sekarang ada master, tapi dia sebenarnya tak pergi sekolah pun. Alright. Dia memang tak pergi sekolah. Mungkin sekolah dia sekolah rendah ke sekolah menengah, tapi dia tak habis sekolah. And then dia masuk degree from the uh, tak 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 ada degree tak ada SPM dan dia boleh masuk degree dan dia ambil MBA juga lah. Uh, so memang boleh perkara tersebut. Tetapi you all kena clear the requirement of that. Si, si, jika calon MPQL ni guru-guru besar ke? Dia mereka yang ikut khusus ke pengetahuan dan guru besar. Ini apps ni apa? Yang ni kena tanya hari hari hari. Uh, Kamis ya, uh, yang ni saya tak boleh nak jawab sebab saya pun tak pasti Alright, di luar bidang saya Apex ni kita setkan atau sudah ada standard Sudah ada standard, okay tetapi you boleh um, Macam nak cakap, you boleh tengok you punya uh, Kriteria kemasukan, okay What requisite yang you perlukan untuk student tersebut Then you boleh buat uh, based on Apex Alright, kadang-kadang sebab different Uh, course uh, need different prerequisite. For example, kalau dia nak masuk course architecture, okay, degree in architecture. Dan sebelum ini dia hanya draftman yang dia masuk je sebagai apa uh, pelukis pelat tanpa uh, sijil whatever, okay. Dan uh, dia masuk sebab dia pada melukis. For example, then mungkin you boleh set criteria tertentu tentang perkara tersebut, okay. Uh, so it depends on the program itself. Okay, uh, sekejap. Jadi yang Apple-Apple ni tanya hari Khamis dekat hari terbuka Apple lah ya. Okay, so jadi uh, saya ingin highlight kan. Okay, satu uh, sebab masa pun dah nak tamai. Um, academic staff sangat penting di highlightkan tentang dia pedagogical and pedagogical technical skill related to ODL. Ya kalau dia biasa mengajar conventional tidak semestinya dia tahu mengajar ODL. For area 4 okay ingat area 4 uh, recruitment, recruitment and management kalau ada ODL punya program Make sure that kalau nak uh, untuk that particular program kalau ada uh, buka uh, apa appointments for new new staff pastikan kalau boleh dapatkan with ODL experiences. Okay. Kemudian staff ratio ni okay. Tengok ya. Kalau biasa kalau um, it's 12 o'clock. Uh, kalau conventional kita dapati bahawa sini ada certain uh, satu kepada dua puluh for example seorang perancara kepada dua puluh tetapi boleh diconsider disebabkan oleh uniqueness and the flexibility of the ODL mungkin you boleh increase ataupun 
increase the ratio lah meaning that 1 kepada 30 ataupun mungkin disebabkan oleh unit sangat banyak masalah okay meaning that you can reduce 1 to 10 so it's up to the uniqueness and flexibility of the ODL ya yeah? alright okay so yang ini okay, yang ni nanti you boleh tengok lah so saya rasa that is academic staff yang dalam educational resources Ha, yang ni mesti disediakan infrastructure, physical learning resources and so on. Alright. Kemudian ah physical saya dah terangkan tadi, ianya berbeza so kena consider that okey bila writing MQA01 lah. Okey soalan-soalan dia ni ke perlu dijawab. Okey. So saya rasa saya skip ni area 5 semua-semua you all boleh baca di sini tapi uh, sebenarnya tambahan Uh, dalam COPA biasa, COPA konvensional kepada COPA ODL adalah um, sama kecuali certain part. Alright. Saya nak tunjuk sekali lalu alright, uh, tentang different shape. Okay. So yang ini ada satu word document. Uh, you boleh cari this one mapping. Kalau sesiapa, kalau uh, ada department yang uh, ada uh, PTJ ataupun PPT yang ingin uh, nak buat dah MQA01 ini you boleh refer to this particular document pergi Google saja code of practice and then nama dia adalah mapping of section 2 3 and 6 of COPA ODL second edition alright uh, boleh cari boleh Google alright yang ini adalah sangat bagus untuk membantu you all dalam uh, menjawab soalan-soalan when you uh, When you fill in the MQA01, okay, the main thing is section 2, 3 and 6, dia kena uh, judge together lah. Alright. So, dalam sini ada nyatakan. Alright. Okay. So, yang ini area 1, program de development and delivery. Sama. Okay, macam biasa. So, yang ini borang-borang ni semua perlu diisi lah. Macam biasa. Macam conventional punya program. Tetapi, yang Okay So 1.2.5 Ada soalan di sini Ada penerangan tentang How you Answer the questions And then evaluate the Appropriateness of the Yang ini Yang ini section 2, section 3 and section 6 Preparation Jadi you boleh refer to this document Help you So, like ni sebenarnya saya dah bincang sendiri. Okay. And then, this is the jawapan saya kasi. So, that you will be able to write to make sure that your document is uh, clear, comprehensive and easy for the uh, MQA auditor to evaluate. Alright. Jadi, orang yang macam saya boleh evaluate, saya biasanya akan evaluate. Kalau uh, datang science, health science punya uh, punya apa ODL uh, provisional uh, application kalau dapat kat saya uh, saya akan dipanggil kat contohnya lah mereka akan panggil seorang pakar ODL untuk tengok alright jadi dia, dia pakar konten akan tengok konten saya akan tengok the ODL lah jadi saya basically saya akan tengok perkara-perkara uh, ni lah sim ada ke tidak alright how to the orient uh, you do the orientation uh, bagaimana you do the assessment how you vet the questions and so on other than that okay apa yang saya other than apa yang saya sentuh tadi adalah tugas uh, the uh, auditor bahagian program okay pakar dalam program tersebut okay alright So saya rasa uh, itu saja nak highlight jadi uh, so to end with my uh, presentation okay jadi kalau you all nak start with ODL kena alignment lah kena do the ODL alignment PLO CLO ini akan uh, rujuk kepada uh, PLO CLO yang biasa tetapi you must include some uh, element of ODL inside that alright and then kena ready you kena ready with the system and all that kena reliable juga and then you will be able to connect with your students staff academic and also the connection between 
academic staff, support staff and students are reliable. Okay, so saya rasa itu saja untuk hari ini. Okay, so let me just tengok kod-kod ada soalan lain, tak ada lah ya. Right. Uh, Puan Salmi dah uh, dah uh, share the uh, document COPA tu di situ. Alright. Okay, so saya uh, ucapkan terima kasih kepada semua uh, kerana bear with me for the three hours. So hopefully uh, ini kena bermanfaat lah kepada semua. InsyaAllah saya harap um, uh, ianya telah membantu uh, anda semua. Kalau ada soalan lain, saya, saya terlupa kalau nak letak. Saya punya ni. So saya punya email adalah azidah at usm.my. Okay. Jadi uh, kalau ada apa-apa pertanyaan yang uh, terbuku di hati dan tidak terjawab pada hari ini, bolehlah email kepada saya untuk clarification. InsyaAllah kita jumpa lagi esok uh, untuk table 4. Alright, esok saya try lah uh, tengok uh, scene, contoh scene untuk uh, dipersembahkan. Alright, so terima kasih banyak-banyak. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon. Okay, um, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Dr. Azida. Um, finally, we have reached uh, the finish line for today's session. Um, it is a very in, uh, an interesting to our session. Truly, uh, time flies uh, quickly when you are enjoying the moment. Um, so many doubts uh, have been cleared or answered by the speaker. Um, from this session, I can say that uh, many are interested uh, interested in developing uh, an ODL program, be it from UMS or outside UMS itself. Okay, um, with regards slides and um, um, the recorded version of this session, we will share um, the materials to through your uh, director of the Academic Excellence Center, and we will ask them to share widely um, throughout your university. For UMS, we will share the materials uh, through the deputy dean um, of academic. Okay. Um, on behalf of UMS, um, I would like to say thank you to our uh, guest speaker for making her time today. Uh, teach us on how uh, on the preparation of MQA01 for ODL program. Um, despite her busy schedule, she, uh, she takes the challenge uh, by accepting our invitation and be with us. And indeed, this topic attracts many participants. Um, um, don't forget, tomorrow, Dr. Azida will still be with us with um, new uh, other topic of um, preparation of Table 4 uh, for ODL program. Um, if you have any uh, other question, as uh, Dr. Azida mentioned, you can uh, directly email to her and um, if she has time, she will um, uh, give the feedback to you. With that, um, see you tomorrow and uh, have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Dr. Azida, terima kasih banyak-banyak. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Asifu. Prof. Terima kasih, yeah. Prof. Jumpa lagi besok, insyaAllah. InsyaAllah. Angkat saya tu. Terima kasih, Prof. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum, Prof. See you tomorrow. InsyaAllah. Terima kasih, Prof. Jumpa lagi besok, insyaAllah. Terima kasih, Prof. Nanti datang uh. di PNM, ya? Ya. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum Dok. Zida. Ya yes, saya. Apa yang cakap tu? Salmi. Puan Salmi. Ah, ya, ya Salmi. Eh, dengar tak? Dengar tak Salmi? <tuh> Ni nak cakap ke? Maybe her line connection is not good.
Saya boleh dengar you all tapi uh, you all tak dengar saya kot. Ha. Dengar, dengar Dr. Azidah. Dan Salmi kot. Ya, yeah, lain uh, ni. Maybe type je. Yeah. Ha. Type je. Ha. Okay, ha. message je lah senang Salmi. Whatsapp je lah. Ha. Okay. Alright, saya keluar dulu. Nanti Salmi, just WhatsApp saya. Alright, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Azda. Thank you very much. Okay, see you tomorrow, insyaAllah. Thank you.